Imagine turning a pocket-sized affordable Raspberry Pi into your very own web server. Whether you're a tech enthusiast or a beginner, by the end of this tutorial, I can promise you, you'll have your own website. Let's get right into it. First, we'll go over the required hardware for this project. And then, we'll be installing and configuring the operating system on the pipe. The OS will manage the interaction between the hardware, network, and our website software. Then, we'll be installing Kubernetes. It's an industry standard piece of tooling that can be used to scale up your website to thousands of machines. For this, we'll be using a lightweight implementation called K3S. Then, we'll be installing what's known as the Content Management System. It's a piece of software designed to run your website and edit all of its pages. Finally, I will be showing you how to configure your website so that it can be reached from the public internet. I've provided some extra resources for you in the video description. Follow along and leave a comment if you get stuck. For this project, you'll need a Raspberry Pi, a small yet powerful computer. You'll also need a power supply to keep the Pi running as well as an SD card for storage. Finally, you'll need an Ethernet cable for your connectivity. If you're not interested in scrounging for these parts, I recommend the Canna Kit, available on Amazon. It includes all the necessary components. I picked this up a few years back for 120 USD. Next up, we need to get our Raspberry Pi ready to run our website. That's where the operating system comes in. Think of the Pi, the internet, and the website as islands in a sea. The operating system acts like a bridge, connecting these islands so that they can communicate and work together. We're going to be using Ubuntu Server for this. It's a great choice for beginners looking to break into Linux. It's super user friendly and backed by a massive community. Now we need to figure out how to load the operating system onto the micro SD card. I'm using the Raspberry Pi Imager. I got this from the official website. Remember to click on these settings here to set the username and password. Without this, you won't be able to control your Pi. You'll be using this later to remotely connect to your Pi. When you hit continue, the software will write to your micro SD card. This may take some time. Then we'll insert the micro SD card into the Pi. Plug your Pi into your home network. and power it on. Now, we're going to connect to our Raspberry Pi remotely from our computer. But before we do, let's chat about SSH, also known as Secure Shell. It's a secure way to access and control your Pi remotely. Think of SSH like a direct encrypted line to your Raspberry Pi. It allows you to send secret commands and data wherever you are. Continuing on, we'll start by identifying our Pi's IP address. For this, I'm using the Fing app on my phone. It's a network scanner that will show you all the connected devices. Now let's use the SSH command to connect to our Pi remotely. Keep in mind that when you're connecting here, you remember to use your username and password. If this is the first time you're connecting, you may also get this prompt. Now we'll install some required modules that are not included by default. Then we'll install K3S, a lightweight version of Kubernetes. You may be prompted for your administrator password. Now we'll check the status of the Kubernetes node. It should reach the ready state fairly quickly. Once that's done, we'll need to install kubectl or kubectl. It's a tool used to manage our Kubernetes setup. We then need to configure kubectl to authenticate with Kubernetes. To confirm that the credentials work, we can check the status of our cluster with kubectl get nodes. This is a requirement for the next step. Once that's done, we're going to install something called Helm. You can think of Helm like the App Store on your phone. But instead of apps for your phone, we'll be installing apps on our Kubernetes setup. Installing Helm is as simple as typing this command. Finally, we will be installing our content management system using Helm. We will be using the Bitnami Ghost Chart. In Helm, 
Every chart represents a deployable app that has configurations that we can override. This first command that we will run will download a configuration file that I have prepared for this project and save it to a file called values.yml. We can then open it up using nano, a command line based text editor to see some of the values I have pre-configured for this chart. There's one value you need to set here, which is your public IP. Feel free to set any of these other values too. Most Helm charts come with a list of configurable values. The full list of configurable values for this chart can be found on Artifact Hub. I've provided these details in the video description below. Now let's hit Ctrl O to save our edits and Ctrl X to exit the nano editor. Next, we'll run the Helm repo add command. This will add the chart reference for Helm to use in our next step. Then we will install the chart to our Kubernetes setup. We will be using the Helm install command, passing in our values file. After the CMS has completed installation, you'll see this confirmation on the screen. It could take up to a few minutes. Before we move to the next step, let's ensure that we can reach it on our home network. We'll achieve this by using the IP address from earlier or the host name that we set up. We'll append it with a port of 380, which is the one I have pre-configured for this project. Seems like everything is working. The final step is to expose your website to the internet. This involves configuring your router to direct incoming traffic to your Raspberry Pi. A good analogy for this is to imagine your Raspberry Pi being a mailing address. The post office is your router and it takes care of sending any incoming traffic to the address that you desire. This specific process is called port forwarding. Keep in mind, the exact method for configuring port forwarding varies on your router's brand and model. So I recommend checking your router's manual or doing a quick search for specific instructions. The general process looks something like this. First, log into your router's administration interface. This is usually done through your web browser using a specific IP address. Then, look for a section called port forwarding. Sometimes it's also under the application and gaming, firewall or advanced settings. Then we'll add a new rule for port forwarding. We'll be exposing an HTTP service. So the incoming port should be port 80. Then we want to configure the IP address for where we want to send the traffic to. In our case, it's the IP address of our Raspberry Pi. Finally, we need to set the forward port or the port we want to route the traffic to. Since our service is running on port 380, the forward port is 380. Save the changes, and now your website should be accessible from the public internet. Let's test this. Congrats, you've set up your first website. Keep in mind that most residential IP addresses change periodically. You may want to use a domain name or a dynamic DNS service, but that goes beyond the scope of this tutorial. If you need any help on this project, leave a comment or reach out to me on my Discord channel.